Hey everyone, welcome to the second episode of 4K on a Budget, the series where we attempt to use a mainstream PC setup to get good results on an Ultra HD display. Our GPU of choice is the ubiquitous NVIDIA GeForce GTX 970, a great graphics card for 1080p gameplay, but not exactly renowned for its 4K performance. But hey, given the right games and the right settings, you'd be amazed at the results it's capable of. Last week, we kicked off the series by running the entire Crisis trilogy at 4K, 30 frames per second, and this week we're attempting another ambitious feat that in theory just doesn't sound possible. Yes, Batman Arkham Knight is renowned for its terrible PC performance, but we'll be aiming for a solid 4K at 30 frames per second there, uh, matching PlayStation 4 frame rates at four times the resolution. And on top of that, we'll be looking at the older Arkham titles, Asylum, City, and Origins, with the aim of achieving 4K gameplay at a consistent 60 frames per second. So that's a ton of gaming and a ton of tweaking to work through then. Let's get going. Okay, so you join me here on the desktop and the first order of business is to overclock the GTX 970. Uh, based on reference clocks, plus 200 to the core and plus 500 to the memory. Now this is an MSI factory overclock GTX 970. It already has a 64 megahertz overclock in place. So we're going to offset that against the 200 to give us 136 megahertz. Okay, I'm going to hedge my bets here on the assumption that the GTX 970 simply isn't going to be able to handle native 4K on Arkham Knight. So I'm going to add in a couple of sub-native custom resolutions. Okay, so how do we do that? We use a tool called Custom Resolution Utility. And you can see here that we've loaded it up and we're going to add in two additional resolutions. And uh, the first resolution we're going to add is essentially 3456 by 1944, which is 90% of both the horizontal and the vertical vertical resolution and a second custom resolution in case that doesn't work 3200 by 1860 hertz that is 83% in both directions of the full 4k output now once you've entered those resolutions you click ok and then you select the restart option which basically reboots the graphics driver and to confirm that everything is okay then you move into the GPU control panel and you need to check that the GPU is doing the scaling because uh, most displays don't actually support these custom resolutions so what we're going to do is get them to render internally and then get the GPU to upscale them to native 4K. Okay, so Batman Arkham Knight. We're going to go for a stress point here, which is, of course, the Batmobile driving section. Okay, so at full 4K, everything maxed, 26, 27 frames per second, that sort of ballpark. And it isn't really too bad considering, but, you know, maybe this gives us scope to optimize by uh, reducing some settings. So I uh, was spinning around there, that seems to cause issues. So I'm gonna turn off motion blur temporarily. And of course, shadows down to normal. Now we've got texture resolution, shadows, and level of detail there. Normal is pretty much on par with PlayStation 4. So those two reductions there, shadows, motion blur, doesn't seem to have made that much difference. So what can we do now? Okay, so let's take the level of detail down to normal. And also we're going to put the motion blur back on and let's see what that does. And the answer is, again, <laughs> nothing whatsoever. It really does seem to be some kind of uh, maybe just a pixel throughput limit here. But I am going to turn off anti-aliasing. And this is quite interesting because this does actually help. You can see now that we're actually up to 30 frames per second but still some dips there. But, you know, maybe this is just this one area. Let's do some driving, see what happens. 28, 29, 30 frames per second. I mean, bearing in mind this is full native 4K, four times the resolution of a 1080p screen. We're doing pretty well here. So we're gonna continue this pursuit here a bit further on down the line. Big explosion, 24 frames per second. This really <laughs> isn't looking good, is it? So. What can we do here? Well, I think we're going to have to bite the bullet and engage one of those custom resolutions that I set up earlier. So 3456 by 1944. This is a 90% scale on both the X and the Y axis. Well, you know, unlocked frame rate at the moment, so we're above 30 frames per second. 32, 34, so that's not bad. We've got a kind of, I don't know, 10 to 15% of wiggle room above 30 frames per second which is kind of what you need if you want to get a 30 frames per second lock so yeah we're giving it everything here and uh, the frame rate is sort of fairly consistent dropping a bit here but still above 30 frames per second threshold sumptuous visuals on this game it really is 
a beautiful title, so much detail in this game, it's, it's, it's exceptional. And obviously 4K resolution or something very close to it, that really works to its favour. So let's engage the 30 frames per second lock that the game has. It's actually not bad. Many of these uh, 30 frames per second options introduce bad frame pacing, but this actually looks pretty good. And yes, everything kind of looks okay. So that was kind of easier than I thought. I mean, it's not quite native 4K, but you would really struggle to tell the difference, I think, on a 90% scale there. So let's go back right to the beginning of the game with these settings locked and to see how well we get on here. So we have this introductory sequence which is kind of like a whole vista view of Gotham City there. Looking pretty good. 30 frames per second, no problems whatsoever. Close up on Batman there you can see the exceptional materials that are in this game here. Uh, the, the specular on the rain, absolutely beautiful. So let's do some flying about and see what happens. I mean, yeah, <laughs> it's looking pretty good. 30 frames per second, it's all sort of uh, holding together quite nicely. Uh, one thing I will say though is that there can be uh, sort of lapses, drops in the frame rate uh, on the cutscenes. I'm not sure there's too much you can do about that uh, aside from lowering resolution still further. My kind of personal rule of thumb is that if it's not intruding on gameplay, I'm not really that concerned about it. So here we are meeting Commissioner Gordon at the top of the building there. We do get some momentary drops here and uh, one thing that we should sort of factor into our consideration here is that Unreal Engine 3 does have streaming issues. So when it's loading in new data, it can cause momentary drops in frame rate. We see it on virtually every Unreal Engine 3 title and of course this one is operating with an open world. So there's a lot of streaming going on. So we've got some more traversal across Gotham here and again, you know, it's kind of monotonous in a way because I think we've done a pretty good job with the settings here. Uh, in terms of the compromises that we made, well, you know, as long as we're kind of uh, on normal or higher, I'm okay with that. That basically puts us on par with the PlayStation 4 version and we have retained the high quality textures here and uh, obviously these will be kind of crucial for a 4K presentation. Uh, as we'll see a bit later on when we look at the other Arkham titles. But uh, yeah, let's get into some combat now and see whether the frame rate holds up. And you know, we've got quite a few NPCs on screen here. Everything is looking fine. So it's kind of not bad at all, really, uh, considering that this is a modern title running on a GTX 970. And on top of that, it is <laughs> notorious for being one of the most poorly optimized titles on PC. And we're looking pretty good. now. I'm going to skip ahead here to another cutscene just before the driving sequence. And here is kind of like another example of where the cutscenes can cause some issues. So when the Batmobile drives in there and we jump in, you get this phenomenal close up. And yeah, the frame rate drops momentarily. It should be stressed to 22 frames per second, but very quickly we're back up to 30, another small lapse there. But now we're going to uh, put the driving section through its paces and to see whether our settings hold up here. And lo and behold, it does. So all of that kind of tweaking and testing we did earlier, all looking good. So I think at this point we've kind of proven that Arkham Knight is perfectly playable and presentable on a 4K screen, but there is a little bit of smoke and mirrors going on here in order to get that consistent frame rate. Now you can, of course, uh, drop all the settings and kind of work your way up, but uh, I actually measured the game running at about 34 frames per second with everything on low. So there really isn't a lot of wiggle room here. And I would uh, strongly suggest that you keep away from the NVIDIA exclusive uh, graphical features here. Okay, so I wanted to take another run at this uh, because obviously we are running with compromised settings. Now I wanted to look into what it would take to run this at a lock 30 frames per second with everything maxed and that includes the game work settings. So yeah, we're going to drop into the menu here and we're going to put everything back up to the maximums. So the anti-aliasing goes back on, uh, shadow quality is back to high, level of detail back to high. The interactive smoke and fog is on, paper debris, enhanced rain, enhanced light shafts, etc, etc. Resolution goes down to 3200 by 1800. This is actually a really good compromise for running on a 4K screen if you don't have the GPU horsepower to hit native 4K. Got another video on the channel looking at that, so please do check that one out. Link in the video description below. Okay, so we're going to restart the game now. Generally, it is smoother 
Uh, so we were doing pretty well with 30 frames per second there, but 1800p, we can actually introduce every single visual effect in the game and we can retain that 30 frames per second frame rate. So this kind of panning scene here onto the sort of mayhem on the streets of Gotham, we were actually having issues maintaining 30 frames per second there on our previous settings. So, you know, we're actually improving the readout in terms of the cutscenes. But yeah, I did notice that this was a slightly softer presentation. So we've actually traded pixels for increased visual fidelity, extra graphical features. And again, it's kind of holding up. So maybe if you're watching this on YouTube, it'll be kind of difficult for you to tell the difference here. Maybe you're not running this on a 4K screen, for example. What I will say is that you can join the Digital Foundry Patreon, $5 a month, and you get access to everything we produce in pristine quality, both H.264 and HEVC encodes. Download one of those, put it on a USB stick, and plug it into your 4K TV, and you can actually see exactly what I saw as I was putting this video together. And you can see that the quality really holds up quite Quite nicely. So yeah, two profiles here for Arkham Knight, but I think we've proven that the game does actually work pretty well on both of them. You can either have a kind of slightly compromised visual feature set, or you can have the full Monty at a lower resolution. Either way, I'd be happy to play both on a 4K screen. And yeah, I was kind of surprised that we could get this to run at all on a 4K screen with a decent presentation, bearing in mind the kind of uh, very poor and deservedly poor reputation this game has. Uh, for those wondering, I did try to run the game at a locked 1080p at 60 frames per second on this exact same setup. And, you know, for the most part, it kind of works, but there's still streaming issues as you're bombing about in the Batmobile. So a locked 1080p 60 GTX 970 Arkham Knight still isn't possible. But 30 frames per second at 4K or very close to it, no problem whatsoever. Okay, so let's move on and uh, we're going to go back in time now to the very first Batman game, which is, of course, Arkham Asylum. So let's check that out. Okay, so the good news with Batman Arkham Asylum is that the Games for Window Live rubbish has been completely removed on the Steam version now, so you could just load it up and you don't need to worry about anything like that. One thing that I'm going to be doing is to engage FXAA on the NVIDIA control panel for this, because uh, you can run this game at 4K, 60 frames per second, but the problem is that there's no anti-aliasing whatsoever. The way to get around that is to use FXAA to get the job done from the GPU side and then turn off MSAA in uh, the kind of game setting control panel. At first impressions, it looks absolutely terrible. And <laughs> the reason why is that, well, we're looking at video sequences here and these obviously don't scale in line with uh, the kind of increases in resolution in today's display technology. So you have to kind of grin and bear it or preferably just press the skip button and get straight into gameplay. So very minor hitching at the very beginning of this stage, but as soon as we have player control, full 60 frames per second here. And uh, I think one thing which uh, kind of surprised me was just how well the art held up, uh, bearing in mind that this game is so old and the fact that it was essentially designed for 720p games consoles, last gen game consoles. So this is kind of testament to the quality of the original artwork and how well you know decent art direction can hold up over time. Uh, the only thing I would say is that, well, again, you know, it was originally designed for 720p games consoles, and of course they only had 512 megabytes of RAM, so I'm pretty sure you do get some higher resolution PC textures, but when you're looking at the art close up, you can see some pretty low res textures, which isn't really ideal. But yeah, I mean, you know, Arkham Asylum always ran really well on PC. Uh, I remember running it on an 8800 GT at 720p, and it worked really well. So running this at 4K 60 frames per second wasn't a huge surprise and neither was the fact that we'd have to turn off the physics effects because it was always suboptimal right from the get-go. Okay, but one thing I wanted to address was uh, the, the kind of hit to performance that you'll get from uh, using those PhysX effects. So I actually went back to the settings, turned everything on, restarted the game, and you know, initially everything kind of looks good, but as soon as we enter this corridor here, right at the beginning of the game, PhysX volumetric fog is engaged and kind of, you know, we've lost 20 frames per second immediately. So 
not good. And then I thought to myself, well, you know, this game is supposedly set up to support a secondary GPU to do the physics, to sort of offload the physics. So I plugged in a GTX 750 Ti. Okay, so let's take another look at those volumetric effects. And well, you know, 48, 50 frames per second. Yeah, it's an improvement, but um, it's just not really viable. I think we'll leave it there. But the bottom line is 4K60 Arkham Asylum. It works really nicely. Maybe somewhere on the internet, there is a high resolution texture pack maybe I should check that out but for now I'm going to move on to Batman Arkham City the sequel which should be more challenging because we've moved from a kind of linear corridor game into a full open world and I'm actually using everything maxed here apart from detail which I've dropped from extreme to very high and of course the physics effects have been disabled the game kicks off with this Catwoman fight and uh, everything is looking really good 60 frames per second but obviously this is kind of very similar to the kind of content we saw in Arkham Asylum. The open world should be more interesting. But yeah, you can see straight away that Rocksteady have doubled down on their high frequency texture detail here. So in theory, this game should hold up better at 4K resolution. Some close-ups though, you can still see the sort of last gen quality of the artwork overall. So let's skip ahead again. And you know what? It's looking pretty good from my point of view. We're scaling the skyscrapers here and getting to the bat suit. Everything looking good so far. You get a vista view of Gotham City once you have the bat suit on. And yeah, 60 frames per second, it's holding up nicely. So I don't think you're gonna have any problems with this game at all. So let's move on again. Uh, the final game that we're going to be taking a look at is, of course, Batman Arkham Origins, which is a game that kind of divides opinion. It was put together by Warner Brothers Montreal while uh, Rocksteady were developing Arkham Knight and they were moving on to the next generation of consoles. It was going to take a long time to come. Warner Brothers wanted to continue the Arkham franchise in the meantime. And this is what we got. So, um, yeah, interesting one, this. Yeah, we can run it at 4K60, but we are going to have to reduce a couple of settings. Obviously, once again, the hardware accelerated physics, we're leaving that off. Uh, depth of field, dynamic shadows and uh, geometric detail have uh, DX11 enhanced modes. Uh, this is actually a really suboptimal implementation of DX11 as it was in Arkham City. I was running that at DirectX 9, by the way. But what we can do is uh, use the DX11 enhanced geometric detail and and this actually tessellates the snow that you walk through. And uh, this was one of the kind of uh, tentpole additions that were added to uh, the PC version of the game. Yes, we can retain that, and yes, we can uh, run at 60 frames per second. A very different look to this game compared to the other Arkham titles. The kind of high frequency detail, the, the sort of unreal hallmark, it's not really implemented in Arkham Origins. So yeah, we can run it at 60 frames per second, full 4K. Uh, whether you actually want to play it or not is another thing entirely. I mean, I do think that the quality level dropped significantly here. I'm actually going to cut to the DLC pack here, which has some close-ups on the main characters. And <laughs> it looks absolutely dreadful. The animation, uh, the definition, yeah, not Batman at its best. But overall, I'm really happy with this. Uh, the three Rocksteady games all work out fairly well overall. Arkham Asylum, Arkham City, they run 4K 60 frames per second with barely any downgrades. I think probably omitting the DX11 effects in Arkham City is probably the biggest downgrade we had to do there, but they never actually kind of worked properly anyway. So to get optimal performance, you're kind of going to be using DX9 anyway. Arkham Asylum though, no problem whatsoever. And actually, you know, going back to Arkham Knight, I'm just really surprised that we were actually able to get this running at all at any kind of sort of playable frame rate on the GTX 970. But I think that game was sort of designed for a 30 frames per second. It's one of these engines that just didn't scale up nicely and wasn't ported over particularly well. And uh, PC gaming, you know, you kind of brute force your way to better performance. But in this case, you had to kind of redirect uh, your resources towards 30 hertz gameplay so you know ramping up resolution effects that kind of thing and in that respect all works out pretty nicely okay then so i think we're going to leave it there uh, i hope you enjoyed this episode of 4k on a budget and we will be back soon with another any suggestions for games that you think we should be trying out uh, please leave them in the comments below and remember of course to see this video at its absolute best please consider supporting the digital foundry patreon you'll be able to download this and every single video we produce in the absolute best quality possible but that's all I got for you for now. Thanks for watching.